Hello, hello. Today is Tuesday, April 7th. Today is an A day. Um, your quote for today is, we fall, we break, we fail, but then we rise, we heal, we overcome. Think about that. It's a good one today. So for your agenda, we have DLP, independent reading for 20 minutes, vocabulary, read aloud, mini lesson, and then your work time. So your schedule has changed a bit. Let me hide that. Remember I told you it would be tentative. I met with ELA. So you will have a um, mini lesson on your intro, a work day. We've changed your conclusion um, till later on. So then uh, your mini lesson on Thursday is two body paragraphs. And then you'll have a work day on that Wednesday. Um, then on Thursday the 16th, mini lesson on your counterclaim paragraph and a work day on Friday. Um, the 21st, your conclusion and a work day. And then you have revisions and edits on the 23rd. And your essay is still due on April 24th. Um, <clears throat> so just make sure that you're getting everything done for that. So DLP. Remember DLPs in Google Forms, but I have given you a quick video that you can watch um, if you have any questions. Independent reading, 20 minutes, your own book, Epic, Overdrive, Flipboard, New Zealand, or magazines or anything else for 20 minutes. Your vocabulary today is Quizlet Games. Uh, you do have a vocabulary quiz on Thursday. Your read aloud today is right here. It's also under the virtual read aloud in classroom. And then you do have a comprehension question that's on forms in um, the virtual learning assignments. So today I want to talk to you about your argument essay rubric. So we will be looking at um, seven different things when we are grading. The first thing is your introduction paragraph. Then we go to your first piece of evidence, which is your first body paragraph, your second piece of evidence, which is your th um, third or your, your second body paragraph. Um, and then your counterclaim would be your third body paragraph. Uh, then you would have a conclusion. Um, we are graded on punctuation and spelling. Um, so today we are just going to focus on the introduction paragraph. So today I want you to learn that good writers convey a sense of urgency around their writing work. One way we can do this is by creating an introduction that hooks your audience and makes them believe in your claim. So good writers are fair and create backstory on the issue and the debate surrounding their claim. Good writers are strategic. They know the position they will be arguing. And good writers are clear and they know exactly what the argument will be by stating their claim right away. That all has to do with your introduction. So if we look at our introduction part of the rubric, we need the first thing, a hook and background information about the problem. Then you need to state your claim. Tell me your thoughts and feelings and then preview of evidence and counterclaim that will be developed in the body. So this just means in paragraph two, three, and four. Um, first body paragraph, second body paragraph, and counterclaim. So these are ways to introduce an argument. I have taken each of these sentence starters and written um, a way to introduce my argument. Remember that all my evidence was about banning books. So the first one is, some people believe that certain books should be banned, but I believe that certain books should not be banned. That's a pretty simple way to introduce. Banning books is hotly contested because some think that certain books are not appropriate for school-aged children. However, others argue that we have a right to decide what our children should be exposed to. Number three, banning books is a complicated issue because some people think that content is inappropriate for school-aged children, 
But this argument is misguided because some of the content they are trying to ban helps students grow as individuals. The actual question that should be debated is books should not be banned. Number four is there has long been disagreements about banning books that are deemed inappropriate for school aged children. I am writing to tell you that this is far from the truth. And number five. You might believe that some books should be banned because of their content, but the truth of the matter is we should all have the choice to decide what is appropriate or inappropriate in our child's life. So I just used those ways to introduce. Um, if you have a different way, you can certainly do that. Um, I just wanted to give you some examples of what you could be doing. So then here is my introduction example, and I used one of my um, examples from the previous. So you might believe that some books should be banned in our schools and libraries because of their content based on the age and maturity of students. But the truth of the matter is we should all have the choice to decide what is appropriate or inappropriate in our child's life. I believe that books should not be banned from our libraries or schools and that there should be equal opportunity for students to have a choice. Students have the right to a variety of books and their parents should be the ones that make the decision for their own child. Who should be allowed to tell you what you can and cannot read? It is a personal choice and if people decide to ban books, they are taking our rights away from us. This is an infringement of the First Amendment right, and censorship can be particularly harmful in schools. It allows content that students should be exposed to to disappear, where they could be learning life lessons and how to show empathy, self-sufficiency, and many other lessons of growing up. Some people will disagree and believe that children should not be making their own choices on the content that they will read. But this is arguably the most controversial practice. This is my introduction. Now I want to walk you through the rubric with my introduction. So the first thing that we need to look at is the hook or the background. Okay, or the backstory. So right here, I have a hook in my backstory. You might believe that some books should be banned in our schools and libraries because of their content based on age and maturity of students. But the truth of the matter is we should all have the choice to decide what's appropriate and inappropriate. Okay, so I'm kind of hooking you in. I'm telling you a little bit about why people want to ban books and why we shouldn't. So the second part in your rubric is the claim. So here is my claim. I believe that books should not be banned from our libraries or schools and that there should be equal opportunity for students to have a choice. Okay. Now, this can be part of my claim or it can be my thoughts and feelings. Okay. So my thoughts and feelings. Students should have the right to a variety of books. Their parents should be the ones to make the decision for their own child. Who should be allowed to tell you what you can and cannot read? It is a personal choice for the people to decide to ban books. They are taking our rights away from us. Okay? So that right there is just my thoughts and feelings. Now, I need to show what is coming up in my paper. <clears throat> so my preview of evidence starts here. This is an infringement of our First Amendment right, and censorship can be particularly harmful in schools. It allows content that students should be exposed to to disappear, where they could be learning life lessons and how to show empathy, self-sufficiency, and many other lessons of growing up. Some people will disagree and believe that children should not be making their own choices on the content that they read. Will be, but this is arguably the most controversial practice. So right there, I have my hook and background or backstory. I have my claim. I have my thoughts and my feelings. And then I have a preview of the evidence. So these are the things that I'll be talking about in my paper. So your independent work time today is you are gonna go to Google Classroom. You are gonna go to Classwork 
and then you are going to look for the 2020 argument essay. This is where you're going to write your whole paper. So the first thing that you're going to find is the introduction rubric at the top. Leave it there. Start writing your introduction below it. Complete your introduction in this document. You're also going to complete your body paragraphs and your conclusion and your counterclaim all within this document. So <clears throat> I just want you to make sure that you are looking at the rubrics in order to find it. Okay. So overall, what you need to complete for today, DLP, vocabulary quizlet, you have a quiz on Thursday. Listen to the read aloud and answer the question on Google Forms. Introduction for the for essay 2020 argument essay document. Follow the rubric and read 20 minutes. My office hours have changed. So Tuesday and Thursday, they are from 8 to 9.30 and 12 to 1.30. And Wednesday and Friday, they are from 8 to 9 and 12 to 1. Remember that we have Google Meet video conference um, tomorrow or today, Tuesday, a day, um, at 11. Tomorrow on Wednesday is C block at 11. And then Thursday is going to be D block at 11. I will send you a link, um, and you can access it from there. I will probably, um, put it in Google Classroom. If you guys have any questions or concerns, please let me know, and I would be happy to help you. Enjoy and have a great day.